Avatar is undisputedly the best series in existence. And no, not the blue people. But yeah, I will absolutely fight you on it. Avatar is amazing. But with the release of the live action Netflix series, at least at the time of this writing or this video uh, production, it's coming soon. And by the time this video releases, it'll actually already be out my hype for it is at its peak. Now, the series, again, I don't know, it may be really good, it may be really bad, but either way, I'm ready for it. And since it's my absolute favorite franchise, I had to take the opportunity to just talk about it. So in this video and a couple ones coming later, I will not only break down the different fighting styles and the martial arts styles that they're based on, but I will also teach you how to do the literal fight combinations that they show you in the series. So if that sounds cool, make sure to stick around. And I kind of wanted to play just a little bit of a game. The last number of your like will decide what your bending style is. So if the last number is a one or a two, you're an airbender. If the last number is a three or a four, you're a waterbender. Five or six, you're an earthbender. Seven or eight, you're a firebender. And nine or zero, you're a chi blocker. Because you know I couldn't leave out chi blocking. But let me know what you got in the comments. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing Avidus and a super hat and welcome to the Modern Ninja channel. And just so that you know, there are timestamps on this video so that you can skip to whatever section of the video that you like in particular. If you wanna to skip to the tutorial or skip to earthbending, it's down there for you. But before I break down the actual styles of the avatar, I need to explain a little bit about who the avatar is. In the last airbender universe, the avatar is the bridge between all four nations and the spirit world, signified by their ability to use all four elements at will, plus, I mean, they also get energy bending as well. However, that one is a little bit more complicated and I won't be talking about that one too much. If you want me to do the best I can at it, then let me know in the comments. But there have been many reincarnations of the avatar over the centuries, men, women, air nomads, fire nation royals, and everything in between. And don't get me wrong, at the base of the show, elemental powers are super cool, but that's not what makes this show so special to me in particular. It's actually the connection it has to martial arts, like real world martial arts. And yeah, I'm sure none of you are surprised when I say that. But in this world, all four bending styles are based on four different forms of Chinese martial arts, styles that are actually trained and have been around for literally hundreds, if not in some cases, thousands of years. So today I'll actually be explaining how each one uh, correlates with its chosen element and why I think the writers made an excellent choice in the styles that they chose. So let's get into the first element. Air is the element of freedom. The air nomads detached themselves from worldly concerns and they found peace and freedom throughout that. They manipulate the air around them gracefully with the intent of avoiding combat because they're peaceful nomads. However, when push comes to shove, they are actually quite formidable fighters. I mean, there is a reason there were so many dead firebenders around Monk Yato. He definitely took a bunch out with him. They are able to generate whole tornadoes, sucking the air out of an opponent's lungs, and even straight up flight. They are the most acrobatic fighters of the Avatar world by far, and I'm not just referring to the flying and gliding abilities. They can actually use their air around them to literally walk circles around their enemies, enhancing their speed, their jump ability, and overall movement even in and out of combat. This is why you can see Aang so easily dodging opponent after opponent or dodging Zuko strike after strike after strike because that's literally what his style is based on. So yes, they walk circles around their opponents, but that's not the only time circles actually come into play with this style. They are almost always seen using circular motions to bend the air in different ways. A great example is how they use circular motions to create the air scooter, which fun fact, this motion is actually a real motion in real martial arts and actually many martial arts. But that circular motion in the bending style is actually a great indication of Bagua, the actual martial art that they use. Bagua or Bagua Zhang is one of three main Chinese martial arts in the Wudang 
school. And forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. It's a school that goes back literally hundreds of years. And fun fact, the two other styles of the uh, Wudang school are, uh, and I can't pronounce this, Zhang Quan and Tai Chi or waterbending. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Bagua is characterized by circ walking. That's actually one of the names that it goes by. It's pretty much the biggest characteristic that all of its practitioners show. And in real life, they use their hands and circular motions with their steps to literally circle around and evade attacks from opponents. Actually using the same hand movements that you can see Aang use many, many times when he's just dodging people. Like when he just dodges the crap out of that firebender kid in his school. The real life students will also focus on flexibility and proper body control early on in their training, oftentimes as children, allowing them to also be a real life acrobat from the start, just like the airbenders did with the Air Nation children. And it doesn't even stop there. Take a guess on what weapon Bagua practitioners use. Go ahead, guess. I'll, I'll give you a second down in the comments. <laughs> well, they train bow staff. And if you got bow staff, you get a bonus point. Now, is it a glider that can fly? Sadly, no, it's not. But the fact that they even use the same weapon in the real life style that they use in the fictional style is absolutely mind blowing. And one of the reasons I think this series is absolutely so cool, or I guess this, this universe is absolutely so cool. Water is the element of change. The people of the water tribe are capable of adapting to many things. They have a sense of community and love that holds them together Together through anything. They wade and flow like the water that they are able to manipulate, allowing attacks to flow around them like water and splash right back at where they came from. Basically allowing them to use the opponent's energy against them to redirect those attacks. They are also able to change the state of water to best fit the situation. So if you need ice for a powerful defense, you got that. Or a liquid for a fl fluid offense, you got that too. And even vapor is used to misdirect or confuse an opponent. Making water one of the most diverse elements in terms of its flexibility. You can use it in so many different situations. And because of this, they're able to greatly adapt to their enemies with ease, which is why I think Tai Chi is such a great choice for a waterbender. Tai Chi is an internal Chinese martial art that is traditionally practiced for self-defense. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. It's gotten a really bad rap in modern times because of the yoga trend. A lot of American schools will teach a more yoga-fied version of uh, Tai Chi and it'll focus on you know flexibility and health and things like that. And there's nothing innately wrong with that. However, it's not what the style was designed for. The true style is an incredibly powerful form of martial arts. And yeah, it does have some aspects of meditation and health benefits in its core style, but that does not mean that the, pra the practitioners can't throw hands with the best of them. The key to making Tai Chi the martial art effective is, like you may have guessed, the same as what makes waterbending effective. They are experts at knowing the appropriate changes to respond to outside forces, redirecting attacks rather than meeting them head on, allowing you to fight much stronger and stronger opponents, which is honestly why it's so good at self-defense. Because if you don't know, in a self-defense situation, you're more than likely going to be attacked by someone that is bigger or stronger than you. And so if you're able to redirect attacks and send them back at the opponent by using the opponent's force, then you're able to take down bigger and bigger foes. And Tai Chi even use weapons like the lasso or chain whip. Both of them are weapons that waterbending moves are literally named after. Like for example, the water whip that Katara does, that's one of the first attacking waterbending moves that we see her use is based off of one of the Tai Chi weapons, which is pretty cool. I honestly can't get enough about how closely tied these bending styles are, but I'll get into the weapons a little bit later on in the series. But before we jump into the next two elements, I wanted to let you guys know about something. I started posting in the community tab little polls so that you guys can kind of weigh in on how the series goes and uh, what we cover in the series. And today I want to know your favorite form of sub bending. The winner of the poll will get a special episode at the end of the series 
breaking down specifically one of the sub bending moves. And if you guys absolutely blow up all of this, these videos and this series as a whole, then I'll maybe think about doing uh, more of the sub bending elements as well. Like, I mean, Toph uses an entirely different style than everyone else. So metal bending alone could be its own video. So if you want to have a say in what I do next, make sure you go to the community tab and cast your vote. But let's get to the next element. Earth is the element of substance. The people of the Earth Kingdom are diverse and strong, and they are persistent and enduring. Earthbenders are the reigning champions of being able to take hits and throw it back harder. They focus on rooting themselves into the ground in order to manipulate it for heavy offense and an unmatched defense. Being able to literally stonewall attacks from pretty much any other bender. This is one of the reasons the Earth Kingdom was able to hold off the Fire Nation for a hundred years. But what really connects earthbending to its real life style is its stances. Even Toph mentions about how important stances are to earthbending. The key to earthbending is your stance. You've got to be steady and strong. Rock is a stubborn element. If you're going to move it, you've got to be like a rock yourself. And in Hunga, the stances are the exact same way. Hunga is the southern Chinese martial art that belongs to the southern Shaolin family of martial arts, with hallmarks being the strongest of stances, and most notably, that being the horse stance. And that horse stance is actually seen used by earthbenders time and time again. It's one of the most popular ones we see them do. I believe, if my memory serves, we even see them do it in the introduction of the series, like in the intro. The first time we see an earthbender use earth, uh, a horse stance is the beginning of the show. And the reason is because the horse dance is one of the strongest dances in all martial arts, which is why many martial arts have their own version of a horse dance, allowing you to uh, root yourself to the ground quite effectively to deliver either powerful punches or be able to take powerful attacks uh, without budging. Even the training that Toph makes Aang do lines up with how real life practitioners would train Hunga. Most new students spin their first portion of their training just working stances, holding them for hours at a time while holding weights or even while training other techniques with their upper body. And just like the earthbending soldiers, practitioners will use a variety of weapons as well, able to combine them with their earthbending to increase it exponentially like we see with the hammers in the series. But in every scene you see an earthbender in, you can see how the rootedness they have to the ground allows them to do much more and much more powerful uh, strikes and blocks. That's the reason they can, uh, that's the reason Boomy can just hold out against Aang's, uh, Aang's strike and just call it a weak breeze. Or the reason that Aang is able to take a direct blast from Ozai from point blank and just like stay in his, that earth cocoon. It is the strongest earthbending, even against an amped firebender. So uh, there is a reason that they chose Hunga, and it is a good reason, at least in my opinion. Fire is the element of power. The people of the Fire Nation have desire and will, and the energy and drive to achieve what they want. That energy, drive, and aggression comes out as one of the best offensive powers in the entire show. Firebenders are the only benders that are able to actually generate their own element for like from their body, allowing them to overwhelm the enemies with fire. This is in part what made them such a force to be reckoned with during the war. They were able to just storm the beaches of wherever they were going and doesn't really matter what element was around them, they could just power through. Well, that and their ability to weld. Using metal and making machines is definitely the firebenders, something the firebenders have covered. But for their bending style, you can see how they will often use quick movements to put as much fire down range as they absolutely can, mixing punches, kicks, and even using their breath to enhance their abilities. Very similar to how Northern Shaolin Kung Fu is practiced. In its broadest sense, Northern Shaolin is an external martial art in Northern China, specifically the Shaolin Monastery in Henan. Most Northern styles of Kung Fu emphasize on long range techniques 
quick advances and retreats and kicking as well as even leaping attacks. All of which fits perfectly in what we see firebenders do in the show. I mean, just taking a look at one of the best fights in the whole series, the Agni Kai in season three between Zuko and Azulo, we see exactly that. Quick attacks, quick retreats, lots of fiery punches, lots of fiery kicks, and plenty of jumping moves. Man, that fight is beautiful. But that's not even the best part of why I think firebenders and their fighting style are so uh, perfectly matched. The real life Northern Shaolin practitioners focus their strategy the same way firebenders do, relying on their quickness to be the aggressor in combative situations to overwhelm their opponents. And just like firebenders, most practitioners focus on empty hand techniques like we see the Fire Nation military. There's not very many firebenders that use weapons. It really doesn't happen very often, even though that would be super cool. Now, the real life martial arts style does include some weapons, even though it's mostly open hand, they do include some weapons. And that's really cool because we see those exact same weapons being used by the Fire Nation military by the non-benders. Or even when Zuko uses his swords to enhance his bending, which is one of the only times we see a firebender use swords to enhance, or use any weapon for that matter, to enhance their bending. That, that's still one of the weapons used by Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. So yet again, we have a perfect match for the firebenders of Avatar. Now that we've gone over all four different styles of bending, let's go and learn how to do the actual combinations that you see in the show. So for our first element, we're going in the order of the intro to the last airbender, which is water, earth, fire, then air, but we're not actually using the show's intro because um, when you really break it down, it's literally only basically one move each, except for Firebender, they get two moves. And air, it's not even anything in particular, it's just a spin and a cross arm. So instead of going through those, we're going through this awesome animation here. Now the full animation is really cool and so if you guys uh, watch this video definitely go check out the full animation. I'll try and leave a link to it down in the description. But we're going to be going over this part of it here because it looks super cool and gets kind of the essence of what water bending is. This is not a beginner so if you've never done athletic stuff this might be a little challenging but I'm going to break it down step by step so that hopefully it's a little easier than it could be. But let's get to it. So starting off we're going to start with our feet slightly apart part reaching as we squat pulling in the energy and raising the water just like so from here we're going to take our right hand and it's going to scoop underneath our left hand is going to scoop on top so it's going to be this circular motion right here it's in a lot of things it's in water bending it's in air bending it's in fire bending and i believe it's kind of in earth as well but um, that's besides the point, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna do our circular motion as we step out with our right leg into a front or bow stance, swiping with the right hand from underneath, left hand finishing the strike. So it's just one, two. And these in real life would be rich hand strikes, striking with this part of your hand, one, two. So yes, it actually does have a real life application. Um, so again, one circle as we step out, one, two. And you wanna make sure these come around just like so. Again, you're staying flowy, you're water. Um, and so it's really important that you stay loose as we do this combination. Next, we're gonna go, if you've seen me do tornado kicks or tornado kick tor tutorials, we're actually gonna do a tornado kick jump into our next move. This means our right leg's gonna step across, our left knee comes up, and we jump and switch feet as we put our right leg down, again, in a straight front stance or bow stance. So one more time, I'm gonna start kind of on this side so you guys can see it a little bit better. But once you've done your one, two, right? You step with the right, launch yourself with the left knee, switch while in the air, and landing with your right leg out, both hands extended just like so. So again, so far we have one, circle, two, three, big jump, four. From here, our left leg lifts as our right hand sweeps up and pulls our water up. 
and our left hand pulls back into this chamber, just like here. Again, lift, one. And then we're gonna take our right leg, we're gonna spin clockwise and wrap. This wraps our arms in, just like so, so that we can follow up with our push, just like that. And again, the key to this is just being loose, just being like water, flowing like water. And so if you find yourself being tense, you're gonna see a different result. You don't wanna do that. You really wanna focus on letting your body come through the motions, right? F slowly and flowy. Uh, the combination and the animation is really fast, but when you're practicing it, go slow because it'll make you better in the long run. But one more time, all together we have one, circle, two, three, four, five, spin up to the right, wrap, six, and making sure you're just shooting that water and it's like you're taking it in and shooting it out. And all together, it'll look something like this. So now it's time to change hats and get to earthbending. With earthbending, this one is gonna be even a little bit harder than the last one using kicks like a jump 360 kick and a 540 as well. So again, if you've never done martial arts before or never checked out any of my other tutorials, I do a lot of these individual moves over at the other tutorials. So if you need a little bit more help than what I'm gonna do in this video, feel free to check them out. Links are down in the description and just, you know, in the playlist in my channel. But we're gonna be going over this combination here. And like I said, that 540 is an advanced move, so Take it easy. Um, I do lots of tutorials on 540s, and if you want me to do another one, just let me know down in the comments below. But here we go with the first move. We're gonna start off with stepping out to our right side, because we're gonna act like we're doing right hand dominant. Uh, stepping out to our right side into a front stance as our left hand does an uppercut, sending our boulder flying forward. As we do this, after we do this, we're going to shift into a front stance going in the opposite direction as we take our right hand and push straight out with a straight punch. So we have our uppercut, shift, straight punch, just like that. From here, we're going to lift our right leg, chambering it for our stomp, or in real life, it could be a side kick or anything else, but we're gonna pull it up in a nice tight chamber, having your knee up nice and high, just like so. And then our back hand's gonna pull back, getting ready for our stomp to launch our, our rock out of the ground. So again, we have one, two, with that straight three in the second one, three, four, launching that boulder up. For, from here, we're actually gonna jump Spin in one, uh, 100, spin in 360 degrees, so one full turn, and with our right leg, kick that boulder away. So again, to cheat this, you can step together. You're gonna jump and spin, kicking our boulder away. All the way through, it looks like that. <clears throat> and again, these are not easy kicks. I'm going through them fast because we have four pending styles to do in the first video, and don't worry, I'll get a little bit more detailed in the individual air, water, and earth videos, or and fire videos coming up soon. But for now, again, we have our uppercut, our straight punch, our chamber, stomp, launch it in the air, step together, jump 360, kick that rock away, and then for our 540, all a 540 is, is we're going to step over, launching that boulder in the air, picking our knee up and placing it forward. And then as we pick that knee up, we launch ourselves in the air and the kicking leg comes from the ground up and over just like that. Uh, to practice this, one drill that you can do is to actually raise your knee just like I am and practice jumping from one side to the other just like that. 
And then you can do the same drill while stepping into it for our full combination. And then the full kick, you really just have to practice until you feel comfortable enough to send it, will be looking just like this. But once we land that kick, we're going to step facing the front again. We're going to wind up pulling both hands to our right hip. Our left hand's gonna shoot up in a high block. At the same time, our right hand shoots out and we shift stances yet again. So again, we land, <clears throat> bang, we land, we turn, we wind up and finish just like that. And again, all together, it'll look something like this. But that's enough of earthbenders, time to get into our firebenders. So for our firebending combination, again, it's from the same uh, uh, animation that we did the past two in. And for this one, we actually dip a little bit into lightning bending, so I'm really excited. I'm also really excited to show you guys that actually lightning bending, or Ilgequan in my style, uh, are actually really, really dangerous techniques going for the eye, or uh, less obvious, going for the bottom, the center of your throat. Literally stabbing into your throat and puncturing your, your trachea or your windpipe so that you can't breathe or eat, which is absolutely terrible. And this combination actually starts with Bruce Lee's one inch punch, which is also really cool. So let's get into it. Starting off, we're going to take our guard stance, feet nice and solidly apart, extending our right hand nice and open for our one inch punch. All you're gonna use is your hip to fire that punch. Once you close your hands, fingers first, thumb second, you're gonna push with your hip as you fire that punch through. So that starts off with Bang, our one inch punch. Now, once we hit our one inch punch, then comes our butterfly. And again, I've done a butterfly tutorial several times on this channel. If you want me to do another one, let me know in the comments. But we're essentially going to reach back, dip our head in front of us as we pull our head behind us and hike up both our chin and our feet for our butterfly jump. Again, we just did a one inch punch wind up, dip, butterfly, and here we are. From here, using our right hand first, uh, we're going to fire one, two, three punches, just straight jabs, one, two, three, sending fire out towards our enemy at a high rate. Then we're going to spin away, away towards our right side, again, away from our front foot, towards the right side as we jump, spinning and pulling both hands down, kind of like how Zuko does in the Agni Kai chopping the fire. So one, two, three, spinning away, bang, and chopping our hands, both our hands straight down. So again, from the beginning, we have our one inch punch, bang, butterfly, second, right, left, right, spinning right, bang, from here. We are actually going to shift our feet in a shuffle step as we pull our hands in and out, just like this. And this will just shoot straight out, shooting our lightning with our two Azula fingers, bang, towards the corner, just like that. And later, if you guys want, I'll show you how to do the original wind up um, because it's really cool, but that's not what we're covering in this combination. So again, from the beginning, Step by step, open hand, close one inch punch, wind up, butterfly kick, land, right, left, right, jumping, chopping straight down, circling, uh, shuffling away, two strikes. And when you shuffle, again, I don't know if I said this, don't remember, um, but make sure you circle your hands out and shoot the lightning out. Again, it's like you're swimming, right? It's just like that. Circle the hands around and shoot. And that's your combination all the way through. It'll look something like this.
And there we go. We have our fire bending combination down packed, but we have one more. So it's time to get geared up for our air bending combination. All right, so now we have air bending, and air bending is the probably the hardest of all of these guys um, because it has so many complex movements with your hand. And if you're not used to doing these kind of ball circle like drills, it's going to be quite uh, difficult to understand. But I'm going to break it down as best I can. So follow along to the best of your ability because this is the easiest of all the moves I saw in that animation. And in the show, we're still gonna get into slightly more advanced techniques. Um, and so, make sure you follow along the best you can. And if you want me to do a tutorial on one of the moves in particular, like I said before, please let me know down in the comments. Starting off, it's already a challenging pose. You're gonna start with your right leg on top in your monk, uh, your airbending monk pose. Again, I am not an airbending monk, so I'm gonna do my best just like you're gonna do yours. So we start here. Once we are here, we reach up, around, we pull up our leg together. So as we circle around, when our arms raise back up, our leg raises as well. So one more time, <clears throat> we're starting here. Ooh, if I can get my balance. There we go, even this is a practice for me. Up, circle, arm raise as we step forward and we're here with our front hand out just like so and our back hand kind of supporting it just like that. It's kind of hard for me to de describe it so I'm just gonna show you. Shooting out, supporting underneath just like that. Kind of like you're guiding it. From here, bang, there we go. We got our first move. From here, we're gonna circle to our right counterclockwise coming around just like so. And with our hands, we're going to circle around and extend. Again, with our hands, it's just imagine you're holding a ball. We're gonna circle that ball around our head and extend out, blasting our air that way. So one more time, we're here all together. Circle the ball around our head bang in our horse stance bending both knees extending our arm to our right from here we're actually going to take our right leg back i'll do the legs first and then the hand second our right leg back steps out and we extend into a front stance facing the left side um, of our forward so if this is forward right my camera for example is forward this will be left so we take our right foot step around so that we're looking to the side just like so and then again our legs will shoot in and out with our kick so what our hands do exactly is we're going to take our hands circle around as we come up and over with our right hand again our right hand just comes around up and over our left hand follows along it just follows along just like so and it's this is i call it a clock move because where our right hand goes the left the short hand follows just behind so one short hand follows just behind as our right hand comes down to our hip our left hand comes into our chest and we push out with our left hand so one more time again we're in our horse stance up and over Left hand follows, right hand to the hip, left hand pulls in, and we extend out with the left hand. All the way through with our steps and our kick, it'll look something like this. Coming around, chamber, and extend. Like I said, this is not an easy move, so definitely take your time practicing this. But starting from the beginning, from our balance move, up, around, out, circle, push, up, over, and out, just like that. And all the way through, it'll look a little bit like this, if I could do it better. Okay, 
air is definitely the hardest one. I'm not gonna lie. It is straight up the hardest one to do in real life that is without actually using air to like let you glide and let you be lighter because in the same combination, he holds himself up in a handstand with one finger and there is no, I can do handstands, but there's no way I could do that without actual air bending. But if you wanna see the rest of this series and if you wanna see uh, the new character that I'm gonna be doing next month, definitely stay tuned and hit the subscribe button while you're here. But let's go back inside. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely keep an eye out on the channel for the future episodes of the series because I'll be breaking down each individual element on its own, uh, as in teaching you a tutorial that's a little bit longer than the one I just did for each one. And I'm actually going to be partnering up with one of my friends, Bobby, who is a martial artist that trains in many of those styles like himself. Like he's a practitioner of I think three of the four styles. And consider blowing this series up by commenting and liking and sharing because if it does well, I'll do uh, whatever you know sub element wins the vote as well as the rest of them. So if this series really just skyrockets, then I guess I'll have to make more of it. And if you wanna help support the channel, consider becoming a member. You will not only get access to all the videos early, but you also get your name running at the end of credits as well, just to show that I appreciate the support that you show. And if you can't monetarily support, don't worry about it. Just dropping a like and sharing this with a friend will also be super helpful. But until next time, my name's DJ Moore, this is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. P.S. Let me know what kind of bender you think I am. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Be the modern ninja, but left off. Just know I'm dangerous. I'm on that Bruce Lee, flow like water, state of mind Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim Out here flashing chains while your boy been in the gym Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to